Uh, this is the May 18th meeting of the Conway Select Board. It's 6.03 in the evening. Uh, we're meeting by a Zoom video conference and it's open to everyone. Uh, everybody can see on the screen the um, access to get into the meeting if they wish. Okay. First item is the minutes, uh, May 11, 220. Everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah. Any additions, corrections? They look great. No? Okay. Yep. They look great as usual. Thank you, Lisa. Make a motion that we approve the minutes for May 11th. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Hi. Philip, yes. Robert, Hi. and myself. Okay. Members attended by, uh, meetings attended by select board members. Philip? Yeah, the, the day, the following, the, the 12th was just a full day of frontier stuff. The negotiation committee, the budget committee, and then the frontier committee, all of which resulted um, in um, those budget, which I guess we'll talk about at 6.30 with the finance committee. But, um, um, and then there will be further, uh, uh, the, the Conway Select, uh, the Conway School Committee meets to, do, to discuss the budget on Wednesday of this week, as well as a, there's another negotiating session coming up today, uh, this week too, so. Okay. That's about it. Uh, and, and then this morning was the um, the, the uh, Frontier um, EDS call, so that I participated in too. So, Robert, uh, well, we had a conservation commission meeting on Tuesday, but it was very short. There's, you know, nobody's doing anything. So, uh, and and very likely we'll cancel the next one, and. Uh, on Wednesday, if you remember, I talked about this last week, but we had our aggregation, um, a short aggregation phone call with Colonial about our aggregation, and we're now out to bid, and this coming Wednesday, we will get our bids back, and, and hopefully they will look a lot like the ones we saw last week. And last week, we talked about them, and we basically said we were going to go for the um, the RPS basic, no extra green, a 5% extra green, and a 100% extra green, and the default that people would go into is the 5% extra green, which is, uh, with 5% extra green, it is, it is like a tenth of a penny more per kilowatt hour than, than the Eversource very low price, but it's, but it's, very low, and anybody that's terribly unhappy at paying that can, can just opt down to the the no extra green price, which is cheaper than Eversource. So what what was the savings over Eversource? Um, I'd have to look up the exact number, and I don't, you know it was about a penny, but um, we don't know what the price is that we're going to get on Wednesday. That's the important price. What we had last week was what they call indicative pricing, uh, pricing that is probably going to be the same as the real pricing. Pretty close. Okay. Uh, I had two meetings last week. I had uh, MMA board of directors meeting. Uh, and of course we talked a lot about budget items. Uh, we talked about COVID-19. Uh, and trying to figure out what the, uh, what the state's going to do in terms of uh, funding the towns. I also had a uh, Massachusetts Selectmen's Association meeting, board meeting. Uh, we talked about some of the up and coming um, online webinars we're going to have for selectmen. And yeah, that's all I had last week. Do we have any public comments? I don't see any public on the line, so I guess there's no public comment. Uh, old business, we have the fiscal 2021 town budget. First item on there is the new loan for the highway facility options for 
the uh, fiscal year 2021 budget. Um, Tom, Jan wanted to be in for that. She's here. I'm here. She's here. Jan, are you here? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Great. Okay. Hi. Hey, Jan, how are we doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Now, I understand you want to do uh, some screen sharing here. Yes. So let me see if I can make that work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up the screen so that you can share. All right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jan. All right. Okay. So can you see that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Great. So we're talking about our, our new loan for the highway garage. And as you know, um, we, our bid was approved. It's a, um, it's a staggered rate for the first five years, the second five years, and the last five years. That's not my dog. Not my dog. Whose dog that is. That's John's dog. <laughs> okay. Not my dog. So anyway, uh, so it averages out to a 2.38% interest rate for every year. And I have a couple of options for you because, you know, we've, we've talked about this quite a bit before, but um, if you look back to what I presented at the town meeting, uh, it's right here. If you can see my screen, I've highlighted it there. We presented using $108,000 and 648 from free cash and uh, raise an appropriate of 1,133,438. So, um, if you put if you put the the impact, in other words, if you try and maintain that impact that we presented, uh, which was right around 0.28 down to 0.25, it's this column right here. Then this is how the loan would look in terms of distribution of free cash and raise and appropriate. So in the first year, we would have used 12,375 free cash. 74,856 raise and appropriate. And, uh, you know, again, keeping the um, presented impact basically the same from 414.91 total, even though this isn't a true total, it compares it to the total that we presented at town meeting, if you can understand that. So the other option would be if the weight on free cash. So because at town meeting we presented this 108,000 of free cash, if you try and maintain that and distribute, distribute, it through, distribute it through the first 10 years, it could lower the impact from year to year and, um, and the reason appropriate is much less. So it depends on where you want to maintain the presentation at town meeting, whether you maintain the tax rate impact or you maintain the free cash usage. So I sent those documents to you so you can study them on your own. And if you, if you wanted to vote on it, you know, next, next time you meet, that's no problem. I just, I wanted to uh, bring this up and raise some questions. And what I would like to see is if you could decide on one or the other and, and make a policy or recommendation or whatever for, for years going forward so that we kind of know what we're going to present at town meeting. Jane. So the bottom line is the debt service is the same. It's this column right here. Either option, your debt service is the same. It's a matter of if you pay for it through free cash or reason appropriate. Jan, it's Philip. So yeah. Um, just a question about the, the, the tax rate um, numbers. So could you convert that into dollars, like roughly? What, what yes, so that's the last column here. So that's dollars per $100,000 value. So for the average home of 300000 you can multiply that by three. So this one, you know, would be... Uh, $81. <laughs> 80, thank you. So you a savings of eighty-one dollars. No, no, it's not no, a that's saving. The, that's the increase of your taxes per year. And we're talking. So the less. So this column is an actual dollar amount right here. 
per hundred thousand dollars of value um, is the tax rate increase per cents. So it's 27 cents tax rate increase per thousand dollar value. Oops. Does that make sense, Phil? So from 2810 to 2680 per hundred thousand dollar value? They're basically the same. Well, that's that's my question. What's the difference between 2816 and 2680? Um, yeah, right. so um, right here, I highlighted these three years because and this is like a tricky calculation to make work. So to try and maintain the free cash amount, I did as best I could and kept this right here even. And we do have a spike for three years. I can, I can even that out so we can maybe go up to 27 here and have an even 27 through if we want to do more than 10 years of free cash use. A complicated yeah, I, I, kind of balance. So I wanted to see which direction you were going to go before I tried to do such a thing. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a significant difference, Jan. You know. just, as a, just as a reminder, the um, original policy was to use free cash to bring the um, borrowing down to the level it would be after 10 years. So you can see that's why the 71,252 in the yellow goes down for, for 10 rows because right. that was yes, the uh, policy as originally agreed to by the finance committee. Um, so so that's, that's, how, that's how this was constructed in the first place, just, just as a reminder. Um, so... So, I mean, the difference in free cash that we're talking about is pretty, it's, it's a couple thousand dollars a year. So, I mean, either way, it's a pretty minor swing. So, yeah, right. so, so it depends what you, the other. it depends. So we got a lower rate. So it depends what you want to benefit. Do you want it to benefit to keep the, the impact down? Or do you want to not use as much free cash? That's, that's kind of what it comes down to. Yeah, so. So, Jan, are you saying you could take $200 out of the free cash out of each of those numbers and, and add them to the 2030 and 2031 numbers? And, or whatever it would take to equal them out? I, I, I'm not following you. Well, you, you have free cash starting at 15979 Yes. And, and if you were going to put $2,000 down in 2031 and 2032 for free cash instead of zero, it would then slightly lower the tax. Right, rate. right. I could so extend you could, it down. You could so, steal yeah. a little from each of the previous 10 years. I would have to because I don't think we should go beyond that 108648 presented right. at town meeting. So it would raise them slightly from 2680. Um, or you can figure out how to do it. I mean, I don't know how you do it. Yeah. No, I could do that but, so that we don't have a spike. And, I mean, you know, if Phil is worried about the two years, it's really two years there, 30 and 31, where they it goes up slightly. Right. Is that what your concern is, Phil? These two. No, my concern is just my, my struggle with basic mathematics and my ability to convert decimals to dollars and all that stuff. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, it, uh, mm -hmm. I la my understanding and all this stuff sort of lags in real time, but. Yeah, yeah so th th this, this year, our so th let me just tell you what a small percentage of our tax rate this is. So this year, our tax rate was 18.7 something. I'm sorry, I don't know the top of my head. So to add, you know, 27 or 28 cents to that, it's a small impact on your tax rate. Yeah. And, you know, and the, so the next column over per 100,000, you know, that's per year of your taxes. Right, and, and Jan, if, if you took column K and made it four decimals, you would see 2680 on the first one. 
Yes. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. All right. It's just rounded because there's only two decimal places. Oops, right. I, I, I don't see the big deal be, from yeah, one to the other. Try again. Here we go. Right. It won't, it won't let me edit it while I'm online. I was going to take off. Right, this. right. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not, not a big deal. Every little bit that you can do to help the taxpayer helps. So, I, I, and I think I, I appreciate the, the, the work that, you, that you're doing just to, just, to try to, just to try to see what can be done. Yeah, so can you, can you and, go back to the previous page, the one you were on sure. before. This one here. Mm. So this one maintains the the impact that we voted on at town meeting. Closer, you know, it's not perfect. Like I said, you have to you have to really work with the distributions. But if this was your goal, then I would obviously make that closer. Um, and and by doing that, you use less free cash because you know we benefit Jan, some Jan, or interest rate. You, you're showing the cash flow screen now. Yeah. Really, I changed it over. On my screen, I see the the debt. Not on ours. Okay. I, I, you might have to X out. Me, I don't know. Let me try. Huh. Let me try sharing my screen again or something. It's the yeah. Surrounded by a green border that's. Hmm. Okay, this will work. Coming back in. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, you got it. Good. Thank you. So anyway, so here you see if you maintain the impact we presented at town meeting by, you know, 41491 to 426. Like I said, obviously that's a little different. I can I can get that closer if this is your goal. And uh, and you use much less free cash that way. So we have to benefit you know, somehow, you know, with the interest savings. So Tom, will you and the finance committee figure out the free cash, the best free cash use? Well, the the only agreement we made with them was that it was going to be over ten years. Jana, uh, what you're saying now is the way that this is currently structured. The impact on the tax rate is actually less the the way the way you have it pr proposed here uh, with the weight on free cash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. So, so yeah, can Correct. you? Yeah. So I guess you can't switch to the first tab. Oh, I can. Without re resharing. No, no. Can you, you do, do that. that? Oh, there yeah. it is. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the second one that Jan showed has the least impact on. Right. So when I say the weight is on the impact, when I say the weight is on the impact, I mean the weight is on maintaining what we presented in town meeting, not to get it the lowest. It's obviously lower if you use more free cash. You understand what I mean? Well, if you go to screen two, Jan. Yeah. yeah, so, so the difference is okay, putting the weight on the free impact. cash. So there's a little and, and, more free But it cash creates a bump. Here. But that's what creates the bump in year 11. Yeah. Right. And she's saying that she can adjust that. But, I can but, smooth that out. But that, that bump isn't significant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think another couple thousand dollars over years 11 and, a tw and 12 are going to upset the finance committee too much. No, I, I don't think so either. I, I don't. I think it's substantial. So, so Roy's on the call. We we can ask him. Roy, what do you think? Roy, you on mute? He may not be uh, entirely functional. We 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 can go on. Yeah, if it's. And that's what you're talking about, Jen, right? Is adding a couple thousand dollars in years 11 and 12 from free cash? Well, I could, but, you know, you're talking $3 a year. Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not significant. So, 
So, so let's so, go with shoe. Would you prefer it be smoother? I can do that. I don't, I don't think it makes yeah, a lot yeah. of difference. But yeah, the weight on free cash is a good, it's a little something for the tax rate. Jan, can I ask you a different question? Sure. So I, if I look at just sort of the, the, the 2021 line and I see um, 21 to 31 for the, for the interest. Yeah. How was that generated? What did you multiply to get that? Yeah. So it's a complicated formula. And uh, okay. so you, what, what happens is, so for the first uh, five years, we got a 1.6 rate. Yeah. And so that affects all of these notes. And, um, but then for the, for the second five years, our rate was higher and that affects, you know, the 10 through 15 notes. So yeah. I didn't calculate it myself. Our financial advisor did. It's a very big formula for the whole 15 years. And it is out to 2.38%. So, okay. I mean, I see the 2.38, but if I multiply that times 922, I don't get 21,231. That's correct. Uh, because it's all they're, they're all it's a complicated formula with all the notes at one time. I see. Okay. Uh, the, the, I there's, just, 50, there's 15 individual state house notes that are yeah. affected all at once. I was once. hoping it would be easy, but it's not. So that's okay. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> okay. Signed them all. Yeah. yeah. You weren't here, Bob. You didn't get to sign them all. <laughs> oh no, I didn't. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> That yeah, must have been so, the hardest part. <laughs> so do you have what you need, Jan? I well, I need you to motion to accept this um, you know, weight on free cash and to written policy to go in the books to go forward to the next group of select board. And you know, it's it, you, whether you call it policy or guidelines or recommendations, you know, it's it's the language, but just something that tells those going forward what our plan is. You gonna make that motion, John? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we wanna go with sheet two, right, Phil? Because that's the one that has the least. You're you're off all, all in favor of that? Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll make the motion uh, that we go with um, the recommendation of Jan on uh, spreadsheet two. Second. Have a second? All right. Bob? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Everybody's in favor. Phil's in favor. Bob's in favor. I'm in favor. So, Jan, it's, it's uh, spreadsheet two for you. Okay. All thank right. Yeah. And thank you for all and, your work on this. Um, Jan? Yes. Jan, we're, we're going to be going to the uh, deed in lieu of taxes right after we hear from Carl. Carl Nelke, who's on. Okay. Well, actually, no. We can we can go to that now, John. If uh, if that sounds good. John, uh, he's yeah, right yeah. there. Go, Carl's go right ahead, there. Jan. So let's go. To, let's go to that. <laughs> okay, so um, we have a property out off of Waitley Road. It's about fifteen acres, and it's been in tax title since two thousand two. Oh boy. Our tax title attorney has been chasing it down to foreclose on it for a long time. And some of our difficulties were that, you know, the owner bought it and well, the owner, whatever, the original owner and passed it on to uh, his son or heir. And then the following heir died. So there were a number of nieces and nephews next in line and uh, they were very difficult to locate and our attorney has been going through the court process to try and notify on here. Them because you can't right. foreclose without notification. 
So I would say, you know, we've been going on with that for probably um, years now. And last year out of the blue, one of the owners popped up and said, you know, hey, we, we really would like to get rid of this. We don't want to own the taxes on this. What can we do? And I told them, well, you could do a deed in lieu of taxes and give it, you know, back to the town to auction off. And he liked that idea. So I put him in touch with our attorney who, I don't know what happened. They, they didn't follow through. So later another owner pops up and says, hey, we thought this was taken care of. Why are we still owing taxes? Yeah. Huh. Now we're pushing it forward once again, and the new heir says he would like to do a deed in lieu of taxes. Not a lot of room in my so mind. it's um it's a little bit of a lengthy process because of the you know there's no been no probate filed and there's a lot to go through. I just wanted to present it to you folks before we start going through this process to see if it was something the select board was interested in taking because you eventually would have to decide. So it was receive it or not go ahead what something is better than nothing yeah i mean the goal is to get it back on the tax records so now in the meantime i cc it gets a little more interesting since last week i cc lee wickham in on it and she thinks it still has uh an accessible road which makes it buildable and then you know it's worth a lot more than what people think so we're still in the process of, of working it out. I just wanted to put my feelers out and see where the select board was at, if they're interested in taking it back and, and selling it or owning it. Are you, is anyone familiar with the parcel? You know, I, Jan, I looked, it up, I looked it up on our tax map. Yeah. This parcel, this parcel is right in the middle of other parcels that are owned by the same person. No, no, no. It's it's in the middle of parcels that are owned by the uh, Northampton Water District. Right, by the same by the same. This entity. one is not owned by the Water District. No, I know that. But oh, okay. Everything surrounding yes, yes, you're it. correct. I see what you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything surrounding it. Right, uh, and they're interested in it, but they don't want to uh, buy. Well, they don't want to pay the taxes because the taxes are pretty high at this point. Uh, what did I tell you, Tom? I think it was 90-something thousand. And so they're not interested in paying that much for it. So they'd rather see the town for clothes on it, put it up for auction, and then they buy it at a lower rate. So can I just ask anybody that might know just historically, how have these things worked out for the town when the town has acted in this way? Has the town made money, made the tax revenue back at auction? Has the town- oh, Absolutely. Has the town ever faced liability issues by anybody or anything or? Um... No. Jan, could you unshare your you know, screen? It's... What's that? Could you unshare? Oh, sure. How do we... Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, you're still looking at my table. Yep. Hmm. Did that work? Okay. There we go. Uh, Tom Donovan, how are you? Tom, you're on mute. You're muted. You're unmuted now. Nope. Hello, you're muted Tom. again. <laughs> there he goes. No. Hey, hey, Jan. Jan, you know, you know what I noticed about this? This has a, this has a. Uh, an assessed value of $115,000. Right, because Lee's still assessing it as a, a buildable lot. And that's what brought this all forward is she says it still has access. There's a road that goes in right across from Roaring Brook Road. Right, yep. Um, so the, the, the Northampton Water District bought up the property after that lot was owned. So she says they can't make it unaccessible. So that road is still an access road as far as she's concerned. But it's not right. maintained. Right. But it's not yep. maintained. I, I don't know the laws behind that. So, I mean, when, when I mean, it's, 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 it's not plowed by the town. No, but right. you have a right to make an accessible driveway if you have a, a parcel in there. 
Yeah, I think I made the mistake of driving on that thing once in, in somebody else's car. <laughs> yeah, the water district is pretty adamant about keeping people out of there. Yeah. So, Jan, what happens after this? Would the, the town would take the parcel and, and sell it at auction? Correct. I, I mean, yes. the town has no interest in keeping the property. And, I don't think so. And you're saying, and very likely, we would get less than what we are owed on taxes. Yes. Unless, it, unless someone buys it as a buildable lot. But there's a lot of work to go through to do that. So you have to prove that you have access. You have to put lines in. And, you know, there's a lot to getting a buildable lot back there. That's part of the question, though, since you know, we, we do have a, a, a highway department that could conceivably do infrastructure to improve the value of our real estate holdings. And at, yeah. what point, at what point is that okay? At what point is that a line that you don't want to cross? I, I don't know. But yeah, do, do, we have, do we have a recommendation from Lee on this? Not at this point, because she's still trying to prove that it actually has access. Okay. So like I said, you know, it's no decisions to be made tonight. It was just right. out yep, to see yep. if you'd be, if you would be interested in taking it in lieu of taxes and we'll go down that road. If not, then um, it's another road. All right. We need, we need a little more information on it before we take that. What I'd love to know from Lee would be what she thinks it might sell for. We can say that we're potentially interested, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, suppose if Northampton our, wants our it. properties are, are assessed at market value. So she has this assessed at 115000 which means she thinks it's worth 115000 you know. And if Northampton anyway. really wants it, they'll pay it. Yeah, well, it's, it's, as I say, it's right in the middle of uh, 293 of their acres. So, you know, who knows? But let's, uh, let's do some more research on it. I asked Lee for her recommendation. Great. All right. Is that amenable to everyone? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, Jan. Okay, next item on our agenda. We have the proposed estimated revenue shortfall figure. Tom? Um, uh, John, may maybe we can do Carl's uh, items. I think it'll be pretty quick. Okay, Carl, let's do yours. Okay, no problem. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Got it. We, um, as you know, we keep uh, four or five transfer station attendants. Uh, so we always have two people on a shift and, um, and whatnot. But we've had a, a problem, actually problems had, has happened for uh, Jim Whitaker, who's, who's one of our transfer station attendants. And um, his wife is very ill. You mean Jim Wakefield? Wakefield, Wakefield. Yeah, That's, yeah. yeah I always get that name wrong. Yeah. Jim Wakefield. And, and um, his his wife is very ill and um, needs constant attention, so he hasn't been able to work over the past few months. Um, and uh, so what we've done is we've talked to him, and he says there's no way he's going to be back anytime soon. And if he does come back, he'd like to do maybe like a fill-in kind of thing or be a fill-in person. Um, so we need a full time. We needed a full-time person. And uh, we had somebody on Waitley Road who, who, was, who was a hot prospect, but he had his knee operated on back in August of last year and it got infected and had a knee replacement done. And it got infected and he went into the hospital two weeks ago. So he's out of the picture. But we had a guy um, a couple of weeks ago on a Wednesday walk in to dump his trash and uh, ask if uh, we were looking for transfer station attendants. This this gentleman is um, t uh, Tom Eaton is his name. He lives over on Sabins Road, um, and he's um, he, he's a good guy. I interviewed him um, a couple weeks ago, or last week I interviewed him, and uh, we want to uh, you know uh, get your permission to hire him. Uh, it just became a matter of of, of what we were going to pay, 
uh, pay him and, and, and whatnot else. Okay. So, um, well, you, you need somebody to fill in for Jim? Yes. Okay. We, we've had a fill-in. We got Paul, but Paul doesn't like to work all the time. So he, he's getting tired of being fill-in. So he, he wants out. And, um, yeah, it's tough, it's tough to get somebody to, you know, stand around there all day on a Saturday. It's a long day. Sure. Yeah. All right. So your recommendation is we hire Mr. Eaton? Yes, sir. Okay. Any, any questions for Carl? Uh, an end, so is this a temporary hire or a permanent hire? No, this will be permanent. And then the previous employer is uh, the employee. Is his employee status being changed? Is he being furloughed or laid off or quit or? Well, we're 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 we're, we're talking to him and trying to get a letter of resignation out of him so we can just, you know, say it's been good to know you, Jim. Um, but. Um, he seems to want to be able to hang on to his options and, and hang around. But I, you know, if he becomes a, a, par, a part timer, uh, he, he says he'll do hazardous waste too. If he, if, if he gets out from underneath this, but he could be tied down yet for another year, maybe two years while his, while his wife recuperates from, from all the issues she has. Okay. Uh, Carl. So that's what I had on as the, um, as a proposed raise was for Jim Wakefield. And you're saying that it's, it's unlikely that we need to act on that now. Right. Right. You are. Yeah. He, 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 I think is making $14 and 83 cents an hour. And by eliminating his pay, we can bring, we can bring Tom in um, at about 1275. I mean, I, I really don't like hiring people uh, below minimum wage. Uh, and and we should really give uh, Roger Gaucher, who's really stepped up to the plate, uh, and um, give him a, a little raise to thirteen twenty seven. And and that would in in total, if we're not paying if we're not paying um, Jim, uh, that'll save us seven hundred and thirty one dollars next year. So, so that sounds like a plan. So the, the, all the changes, it, it affects personnel, but not really the budget. Exactly. Right. Precisely. <coughs> so what's, what's, what, uh, what's the anticipated raise from what to what? Well, Ooh. we're going to, we're going to take, bring Gaucher, uh, Roger Gaucher. He's been with us for two years and he's doing a really good job. I'd like to bring him up. I think he's, oh, Somewhere under somewhere under thirteen dollars an hour. I'd like to bring him up to thirteen twenty seven an hour, and uh, bring bring Tom Eaton in at uh, twelve seventy five. Hmm. And by eliminating by eliminating uh, Jim's income, we can we can actually save some money. So if somebody wants to make that motion, I can work with Carl to get the offer letter out. To Mr. Eaton and uh, Carl, I'll, I'll I'll just need to uh, check in with you uh, yep. before we make that formal. Okay. Do you have any other questions, Philip? Any other questions? Um, no, not about this. No. Okay. Good. All right, Bob. Any questions? Uh, I I always I think Jim Jim Wayfield has been a really great transfer station attendant. I hate to see him go, but that's not the issue here. So yeah, uh, I, I, I agree totally with you. Yeah. But on this issue, uh, I'll make a motion that uh, uh, on Carl's recommendation, uh, we um, approve the hiring of Mr. Eaton um, for the 1275 an hour and the raise to Roger Gaucher. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Philip? Yes. Okay, Robert? Aye. And myself, all, all in favor. Unanimous. Thank you, Carl. Okay. And thanks for you and for all the other guys that do a lot of, a lot of good work over there. Yeah, we try. <laughs> you do a great job. Great. Okay, thank you very much. We'll talk to you yeah. later. Thank you. Yeah, take all care. Right, bye. All right, Tom, next item on the agenda is the proposed uh, estimated revenue shortfall. 
figures? Well, if you want to go through the uh, select board discussion on this, on these items, uh, you can, um, or we could open it up to the uh, finance committee since they're uh, since they're on now. Um, probably makes sense rather than have them listen to the select board discuss the things that they're going to be discussing a few minutes later. Um, I don't know how I you think, want to. I think the, the finance that. committee should should come in with us on this. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just skip down to the joint meeting then. All right, we have a joint meeting with the uh, Finance Committee. First item is the, um, the estimated revenue shortfall figures. Tom? Well, you know, I had uh, proposed um, out of absolutely thin air and well, okay, looking at historic revenue figures around the uh, Great Recession, uh, I proposed a figure of $318,000 is something we ought to look at as what we could lose in revenue um, next year, given the fact that the state is going to uh, be in financial difficulties. We could lose local aid, and we might also lose uh, various forms of town revenue, including uh, excise taxes and, of course, real estate taxes. So I had proposed that as a figure, um, but it's completely up for discussion. Uh, I think uh, you all should have gotten the revenue uh, sheet uh, where I, uh, there's actually three sheets in the workbook where I show how I generated that figure. And again, we, we don't really have anything to compare our current situation to but I thought it would be useful as a starting point. Um, I've heard opinions on either side that it's too high and too low. So uh, I think it would be helpful to, to set that revenue figure before we go on to the rest of the discussion though, to, to have something that, that share, everybody agrees you, on. Can you share your screen on that? Tom, can you share your screen? I'm looking at it on my screen. I could share it, but Tom could too. Uh, sure, go go ahead. R remember, there are, there are three sheets in that workbook, so you, you might just want the final sheet, the third one. Right, that's the one that has the. Uh... All right, let me see if I can share that. That's your Great Recession sheet, Tom. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it, it, it's titled Sheet 2. I can... Um, I, can everybody see that? Yep. Yes. Oh, that's good. All right, Tom, this is the sheet that you want to see. Yeah, this, this is the result of the two previous sheets. Um, and what I did was I generated a number as a percentage of the FY19 figures. We don't have FY20 revenue figures yet, so I couldn't use those. Uh, that's another thing that makes this uh, a fairly fuzzy figure. Uh, nonetheless, uh, this is how I generated that, uh, the total that we might not have. With, with those various um, various figures going down. You'll note um, we lost 8.37% of our Chapter 70 funding over, the, over uh, a, at least a couple years of the Great Recession. Uh, and that would be $52,000 in today's, in, in, uh, well, in fiscal year 19's budget. John, has Baker uh, talked some people about are, that? Has Baker talked about Chapter 70? Uh, they haven't said anything about Chapter 70 yet. There, there's a lot of optimism that they're going to try to hold it harmless. One of the reasons they were able to do so last time was because of the um, Recovery and Reinvestment Act. And we don't have a comparable act at this time. 
Now, this figure, this $318,000 figure, we can cover this with free cash and stabilization. So, you know, we're okay if we have these kinds of, of reductions. I just share an opinion that I think this, this particular line item is understated, and I just want to say why, and that's um, that, that th there's two, th they're not only co going to co contemplating or not, co uh, you know, the actual cut to Chapter 70 numbers itself, they are rejiggering the minimum town contributions to the frontier budget, um, which is, and that's that uh, EQV thing, and that's how we had that for the 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 twelve percent frontier increase um, last year or two years ago or whatever that was when 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 they redo that, and that's because we had the 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 burst the the, the income from the dam revenue that got started up again on the Deerfield River and all that. And, and the Comcast work too. And, and my, my point in all that is that that's such a huge wild card that little tiny, you know, fractions of a percentage adjustment to that ratio can ha have massive swings to our respective budgets. So um, there's a, a, a possibility. Right, look, looks like looks like we rebooted here. But but I mean, the, 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 there's a possibility of a real big number being hung on that for us. So Phil, you'd like to keep it at least at fifty thousand. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, I, I, I would like to estimate the loss from Chapter 70 at a higher number than what we're estimated. It, it, you know, and the other part of that that we're not talking about is the, the and, and we, we have a, a real solid history of nine C cuts to our transportation, which is, you know, after, um, and the, we, tra we track that through multiple, fr fr from right after 9-11, and then again, right after the 2008, 2009, this year we're getting a 74% reimbursement. We were going to be getting it the, um, at a minimum. We're anticipating it, that being cut to 50, but there's a real chance that could get cut to 25 um, and, or somewhere between 25 and 50 because it has in the past. That it, and so those numbers to, to just to our town, a, 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 a cut from, um, from 74 to 50 is a $50,000 hit to our town. And, and that, that, has to be, that has to be put into that, this calculation as well. So to me, the, the, the number, the projected dollar amount instead of 52,000 should be closer to 100,000 on that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. that so Phil Phil yeah it's Roy I yeah, right. uh, can, can you summarize what you just said mm -hmm. where, where, where which line did you want to see go to a hundred thousand um, the, the 78, 78, 78 line. line okay Okay, can I can I uh, interject my two cents? Yeah, yeah. Well, I look at it this way, and I could be, you know, uh, could be a little nuts. So if you took uh, what every month is is uh, it's a twelve, that's about eight percent. Let's say the economy is running at half its rate for three months, and let's say their state collections are going to be down. So um, six state collections might be down. Um, uh, 18%, does that make sense? Um, and so, wait, did I figure that right? Every month, what's 12, so it's eight, eight, and, eight and change percent per month. So I'm looking at it, so we're shut down here now, this is the second month, we're gonna slowly open, it's third month, we've got some added recovery time, whatever. I, I feel, you know, pretty conservative to say that the economy, the state economy was running at 50%, let's say, for three months. And then, of course, I'm, I don't have a model here, but if you said that their collections are going to be off by 50% um, over the three months, um, so can we f maybe look at it that way and see how it comes up with? I, I understand, Tom Hutchinson, that is, that the, uh, 
the, these numbers here were historical from the last uh, debacle, but I, I don't know. This 317,000 to me, it's just, it seems low. I think if I was looking at 500,000, I would say that, that that is, you know, it's probably a good, very conservative estimate. That, but that's my own, again, it's my two cents. That's actually the number that I thought was, would, was, it, was most appropriate, Roy. That, that, well, that's the number that I thought, all things considered, that, that, that I didn't get there yet because we're just in line one. But um, uh, Okay, sorry. I, I, guess, actually, I, I guess. actually thought that that, that that was about the right number. And my understanding of our neighboring towns is that they're, they're, they're the, you know, Waitley in particular, which is very comparable, that's about where they're at. I mean, if, if you operate under that assumption, then it might direct more conservative um, uh, thinking about where and how to, how to deal with the shortfall. Yes. <laughs> Any other comments, well, Alan? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, right, right now, we can handle a shortfall of 318 with our free cash and our uh, capitalization funds. If we go beyond that, we're going to have to borrow. Okay. So we have to do that. Is that a bad thing? We have a town meeting halfway through uh, 2021 to find out exactly where we're at. Because right now, we don't have any of these numbers. All right. But I mean, what, you know, what our neighboring towns are doing is they're using their chapter 90 for, for the, the, the vehicles. They're, they're, and and um, they're going through every department and postponing every raise, everything till next year at a minimum and um, going through every department and making the cuts before they look at budgets, uh, borrowing. And, and I think that's what we should be doing is going through each department um, uh, and and making postponements or cuts. Yeah, but you you there's limits to what you you want to do without uh, you know what are you going to do have uh, you know have the police chief work two thirds time you're going to have the dump open a day less I mean you know it get, it gets to a point where it's counterproductive to do that I mean yeah it's just you know that's that's again it's my. My but, Roy, but Roy, you, you you can pick and choose, though. You know what I mean. If, if it's not much money, well, you you know you wouldn't close the dump down for a day. But something else, it may add up to some money. I, I myself think we ought to be feeling very conservative about any numbers we start throwing around because they're not going to be correct. And uh, it's nice to be optimistic, but there's not a lot that's saying this is all just going to be. Uh, nice and rosy come to, come to the end of August. Alan here, anecdotally, I'll give you an example. So we were asked back in February to take $9,000 from the town uh, reserve fund and put it towards the purchase of a piece of equipment in the kitchen of the Conway Grammar School. And you know, I, I was kind of curious, you know, I was a guy who finances business plans and this and that, you know, and an MBA, CFA and all that kind of stuff. You know, I always look at round numbers and say, all right, where's the BS factor here? Because it begins to stink pretty hard for me. Well, the final numbers came in at $6,553. So that's a reduction of about 25%, 30% right there. So I say there's lots of room we can start cutting in this budget. And I think we've got to start running this town like a business. Because if somebody gave me an invoice and said, I'll give it to you later, but here's nine grand. So I'll tell you, sure, I'll go to a restaurant tomorrow and get a meal and I'll pay you for it the following day. You can trust me, right? You know, we got to start. We got to start sharpening up the pencils over here. There's fat in that budget. I know there is, and let's just start getting to it. We also are supposed to have gotten a whole new budget between last week and this week. You didn't get anything. So I mean, I don't think there's been a whole lot that's been uh, thought of over the last, you know, week or so in terms of where we can go on this budget. So it's time to roll up the shirt sleeves. Oh, well, okay, all right, Alan. Where, where do you suggest? Don't talk over me, all right? If you're expecting to go to town meeting and get a vote on nothing. If you're a banker, if I go approach me as a banker with this budget, I tell you, they're going to stick it right up your ass. That's about that, all right? Hey, Alan. Hey, Alan. <laughs> Where do you want to make cuts in the budget? Come on, let's talk specifics here. I just gave you $2,500 if you listen to it. Did you hear me? $2,500. Where do you want to make cuts, Alan? Why don't you get together? 
to your committee and make and make some suggestions for cuts. All right. If you want to, we will. If you're not going to do your job, we'll do it. It ain't fun, but you know we had to do it before in the history of finance committees. All right. Well, don't come up with platitudes here. Come up with concrete suggestions. I just if, gave you one for twenty five hundred. You bucks. think there's fat in the budget? You tell us where it is. It's not necessarily that there's fat. It's just that there, that, you know, that there's things that can be postponed. Um, to, yeah. to, and, and, and that, you know, that there are two, there are two, you know, the highway department is, is one and the, the, um, the, uh, the town administrator's budget is another. What about the, what about the highway department? Well, you, you wouldn't have to, like Ronnie, the equipment he wanted, you know, that he was, you know, that was on. Well, the, that's a capital item. What about the operating budget? Talking, exactly. We're talking operations here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Where are the cuts in the operating budget for the highway department? I don't know. Have the department had to go where they were supposed to over the last week. Did that happen? No. Obviously not. I mean, do you want the finance committee to assume that role? Is it too much for the uh, man administrator to... I can see it being a compromised position, you know. I'm not going to assume I, that. Well. I got a total of $16,000 in voluntary cuts when I sent out a memo saying, uh, you know, what can you cut out? I'll, I'll, I'll mention that whatever might be considered uh, a budget overage this year turns into next year's free cash. So we've always used free cash pretty well, I think in the town. So I, I don't know that there would be, um, that, that I would characterize it as fat. Well, uh, unless you don't want any free cash next year. Look, look, here's the, here's the thing. The town government runs in a, it's been running in a particular manner. And all of a sudden we have a cliff that we have a, a canyon that has opened up in front of us. And, I, at least I'm, I'm under the impression mm -hmm. that at least some of the federal stuff that is coming is coming to fill that canyon, at least at the state level. What's that? Am, am, what I, you, am I wrong? Roy, what specifically, what do you think is coming? Uh, what do I think is coming? Well, did you look at your bank account? Well, I don't. I shouldn't ask you necessarily. So, uh, okay. Roy, are you talking about the Care Act, the Care Act, and the fact that the Conway could potentially qualify for one hundred and sixty thousand dollars under it? Well, that's there's one hundred and sixty thousand. But again, the state is going to be short money, right? right? So the question is, they're going to they're not going to get everything that they're short. So so again, maybe that's an argument that the five hundred thousand is maybe an excessive number. Maybe it is closer to three hundred thousand. I really don't know. I, I honestly don't know. But I think that I, I don't see harm in planning for a very conservative case and, and looking at the alternatives. And the alternatives are not to, at least as I understand it, you could correct me, John, if, if, I'm, if I'm mistaken, but we have an opportunity to borrow some money at almost a 0% interest rate. Now, I granted we and I would never say, and I would never want to see it go for year two, year three, year four, where you're borrowing money to fund operations. That's not that's not the way we do it, and it's not good practice. But if we had to do it for a year, possibly two, um, and maybe the second year of the borrowing is considerably less, um, I don't think it's the end of the world. Myself, again, it's my own opinion. Um, and there. I think we have no choice. Twenty twenty one budget is the problem here. I think the, the, the problem could be the twenty twenty two budget. I think the problem's gonna go even bigger in twenty twenty two if we don't uh, bite the bullet now. If you don't want to cut, then we have to borrow. I mean that's my thought. The, the you don't want to have us do a recommendation on cuts. I mean getting this budget approved at town meeting next month is unrealistic. I mean that's up, up so I'm not even looking at right, well, Alan, Alan, if you have specifics about the budget lay it out on the table. I'm asking the department has, they were supposed to have done that. He said 16,000. So far, 16,000 has been cut. What else? We've cut 2,500 from the, uh, from the bill there to Conway Grammar School. So we're up to 18,500. You know, we've got to work it up from there. I realize it's not easy, you know, but 
we got to do it. If you don't want to borrow and you want to think that the town is going to approve to borrow money from the stabilization and use all of our free cash, I don't think it's going to pass us for a town meeting. I, Phil, you know. how much of the schools cut? The school cut close to four hundred thousand dollars to come up with a level budget. You all are welcome. No, no. So, and 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 our piece of that is what eighty thousand. I mean, uh, that was on there. I'm not looking at it right now. If anybody yeah. wants to pull that up, that was on there on page three. We're oh, usually yeah. about a sixth of the budget, I think. We're, we're yeah, a little less. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm not sure I see how to cut much out of the highway department. Schools, no. I can't speak to, okay? And the reason I say that is because if you're, uh, you know, if you're, dri if you're driving around a bucket of bolts now and you're going to put off replacing it or whatever, it, well, again, that's not even operation. Let's talk operations. What are you talking about cutting? You're not going to cut salt. You're not going to cut um, oil for the vehicles. You're going to cut a person. Okay, so if you cut a person out of the crew, how is that crew going to function? How, what's the implications for public safety on that? And I would challenge anybody to take a look at that. Well, I mean, I, I actually did take a look at that. And I, I just to point out that, you know, prior to um, the current highway boss getting his position, uh, there was one less in the crew that one of the things that we did that the town did for the current highway boss when he took his position is they added another person to the crew and that and which incidentally is why it's so uh, to me, it's one of the reasons why so many people always stand up and say the roads are better now well yeah we increased the, the workforce so I, I, honestly um, you want to see the roads get worse than they are uh, uh, the, you know you're talking about the year about one year one year pauses and one year hiatuses and 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 what what can what can be punted down the road for one year that's what. I, that's how I look at it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I. Th I think rather than a, a business, you know, um, like like the capital discussions about you know every five years and get rid of the vehicles and do this and do that, buy new and blah blah blah. And that works all great if you're a Wemco or a Northeast Utilities. You're a huge. You got eight hundred vehicles or something. Conway doesn't even have two thousand people. We should be looking at our budget more as a family budget than any kind of big business budget. We're just a little town. And I think we got to look at it more as a family. And when a family gets a big curveball, you figure out what we're, what we're going to postpone, similar to what Phil's saying. We're not doing away with it, but maybe we'll put it on the back burner for a minute. Yeah. And we're also a flat growth town in terms of net revenues for the fiscal year 21, maybe beyond. You know, essentially, we're keeping up with inflation if we're lucky. There was one or two of the vehicles that we were turning in on what Tom's talking about, the five-year thing. And, and I think it actually we stretched it to six years. Yeah, I, and, I, you know, and, I'm just saying. And we could postpone that. We, you know. we could postpone that, but it still doesn't solve. I mean, all that does is give you more free cash or it gives you more, less out of uh, stabilization. Right. Or, right. Yeah, but Roy, right. Roy, going forward, having a little more free cash or, or more stable yeah. stabilization, it may be a oh. benefit to us, especially, I, come, I, I, especially I, come Thanksgiving. But yeah. it won't affect the budget no, at all. I have no argument. I have no argument. The only thing that I would say concerning highway department is you could substitute beans and rice for meat, okay? But you can't just take away portions. You've got to have something in its place. I will, I will say that uh, the current road boss is doing a much better job than the former one. And that's a major reason why the roads are better. We don't need to say that, though. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but that's, you know, that's the case. I, I've been in town since 83, 84, so I got a little bit of historical perspective that Phil used to, likes to bring out, but Phil's not that old around here yet. All right, all right. Let, let, let's talk about budget. Let's Let's not talk about highway bosses, one approach to another, okay? Okay. No, I was talking about so, How about, it, how about it, this? Uh, can I just say that the, 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 front, the frontier process to get to, to get to that 388 that they cut, um, what, you know, what, first of all, they gave up three employees. There was two, two, two new hires that, that they had made that were desperately needed um, that they gave up and one IA that they let retire and not replace. But the big savings actually came 
from the business manager going through the line item by line item in every department in that building, every sub account that had a greater than $20 annual expenditure and whoever was responsible for those sub accounts to see what could be saved. And, and those little things, those hundreds of little things add up to many thousands of dollars. And that's the, but, but that's like the, a level of, uh, uh, you know, work and, you know, rolling up the shirt sleeves and, and all that, that, you know, I, you know, that, that's what I would ask for. Before we talk about borrowing, we need to go through everything and, and, and see what, see what can be squeezed out. If copier costs were a hundred bucks last year, can we do it for an 80, for 80 or 70, et cetera, et cetera. And all those things add up. But we're talking about borrowing next year, not now. Well, I mean, Right. Okay. Well, that's that's fine. I mean, I. But it, so take this number, three hundred versus five hundred. Maybe we should, or set it, arrive in the middle at four hundred thousand, and look at it that way. It, you know, it is. I'm happy to work out options for whatever policy direction I'm given. It, 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 well, my thought is that the state hasn't come up with their budget forecast, and they probably won't to the end of next month. So, if you expect to go to town based on your your best guesstimate. And we're not soothsayers here. Then I expect you to get to the word no pretty quickly by the town, and we'll defer the budget discussion to a later town meeting. I'm just trying to make the most effective use of people's time at a town meeting. You know, Alan, uh, we're being I'm being told really consistently that it's going to be August till the state comes up with their numbers. Anything before? I mean, like, what's the rush? You know, if we have to go to one twelfth, one twelfth, I realize it's a pain in the rear end, but I mean, maybe it's time we uh, delve into the budget more deeply here. I agree. And Phil, like you were saying, they went through, you know, the <laughs> tremendous scrutiny recently on the budget and the frontier. But part of the reason they were able to do that was because there wasn't school. Well, there still is school. <laughs> now, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's not the same. A lot of the people on the staff, they're busy, but not the same as when all the kids and the whole thing's happening. It's um, like, you know, it, so to do that scrutiny, it, it takes time. It, and you have to be able to get at the information. There may have fact I'm not saying it's a bad part. idea. If, if the schools have to operate at half, at half uh, capacity all the time, there, and with cleanings, deep cleanings in between, there may, in fact, be considerably higher costs in the I school. We, no, nobody knows. Right. So... I mean, is this an argument to just to, to say, well, just do a 12th of, you know, every month, a 12th of this year's budget? I mean, you know, I, I can live with that, too. I don't know. You know, the, the, the school superintendent's argument in this, what, you know, that, that um, you know, was, was that, look, Frontier's doing a level budget. The towns are, are doing are, are moving in that direction. And that the one twelfth budget, until we actually have numbers from the state, you know, the the you know, he thought that made the most sense for everybody, and that it, the the whole rationale for why we're doing this, you know, the four towns have all just sort of we're doing this June meeting, and and because um, because we wanted to make operations smoother, we wanted what exactly, um, but you know. To, to me, with, without real numbers, we got to come back and have a town meeting as soon as we get real numbers, no matter what we do. Agreed. So, wh wh what exactly are we doing? And I, I, I've been saying this for a while, though, I, you know, the one twelfth idea is, to me, what made the most sense. Level fund, one twelfth. we get numbers and we go from there. I have no problems with that either. I mean... That's that's why they have that formula. That's why they have this. Yeah, I mean it's it's uncharted territory at this point. With the other three towns in Frontier going forward with a budget, us going to one twelfth, that will wreak havoc with the Frontier bookkeeping people. Um, but um, but you know we're allowed to do that. Oh. Jan, what's this going to do to you? Uh, 
I see her muted still on there. Oh, I'm no. coming back. Hang on. IGN. Here I am again. So we're talking um, about the 112 budget. Well, there's a couple of concerns I have, and I've brought them up before, and I guess they're they're going to be addressed, but you know, many of our payments are more than one twelfth at a time. For example, our frontier assessment, it's, you know, we pay a quarter at a time. And uh, a lot of our software uh, contracts, we pay the full year in advance. So July is the heaviest payment schedule. So I spend way more than one twelfth in July. Um, Tom, how did you say that was going to be addressed? You did, you did mention it. I believe that DOR um, recognizes that that is the case for many municipalities. What I've heard is that so long as the 12 times 1 12th budget for the year is yes. adhered to, any month can go over so long as by the end of the fiscal year, uh, the overall budget hasn't gone over. Okay. The other thing I wanted to say is that fortunately this year we have a little bit of a benefit in that we have all the highway garage money at our fingertips. So I've been asking for a payment schedule and how we're going to pay uh, those bills and it's not finalized yet, but we're working on it. And, um, but, but we're going to have, we're going to be receiving our loan money this week or early next week. And we've already taken the money out of stabilization for the highway garage. So that money's just sitting in the accounts for cash flow. So we're not behind on cash flow. I'm not going to be looking for anything extra until, uh, you know, like March or so is, is when I might start getting in trouble. So you have lots of time to figure it out. Jan, is it, when you say it in March or something, are you anticipating that uh, come November 1st, everyone's paying their property taxes? No, so I've actually done uh, a few tables. We're a little bit behind. We're about 10% behind as compared to the last two years. So if you look at tax payments that have come in from October through the current date, I did an update on it today. I can show you if you want. Would you like to see that? Yeah. That's very helpful. Thanks for doing that. All right. How do I share my screen once again? I mean, I can forward to the finance committee members if you can't get it up. I, I have uh, it. Click share screen down there. I'm, uh, I'm such a novice on this whole Zoom thing. I don't see my shared screen. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. You, don't, you don't know what a novice uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good, because I can't. <laughs> Let me move my, there, okay. So that's a comparison. So in 2018, this is, uh, I updated it to include personal property as well as real estate taxes. And if you look at uh, the date of the first issue, 10-1, through today's date, 5-18, in 2018, we had 96% of the commitment fulfilled. In 2019, we had 90%, and this year we have 80%. So we're behind, but it's not horrible. And uh, I've heard from a few people, not too many, that they can't pay on time and they'd like to uh, address an installment agreement. And we, of course, always uh, try and do that for them. So um, I'm not terribly discouraged by the cash flow. Did, did you look at my cash flow example? Yeah, so, so it just generally, Jan, like how much do these kinds of numbers lag behind the actual reality? Like what's the time frame? Just sort of like, you know, like infections are two weeks behind testing numbers or whatever. It's just like what, yeah, um, be, because I, I hear from so many people just um, like the fear of what's going to be happening in the next month or two is like worse than what their current reality is. And especially if colleges cut, if our colleges cut back, um, and, you know, our big employment areas, if they cut back or alter the way they do business, which seems like it's possible, certainly, um, th that's going to really spread pain throughout our town. We're so dependent on those few industries, education, um, 
healthcare, et cetera. And there's potential for real, real losses in those industries starting in the fall as they recalibrate for the new reality. So are you talking about homeowners' ability to pay taxes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and more. So I think you're, I think, you know, like someone else said earlier, you're not going to see the effects of that until the following year because yeah. now people have already paid their mortgage. Their mortgages companies are paying, you know, right. many, I, I don't have the exact percentage, but most of our taxes are paid by mortgage companies. Right. And the ones that aren't, many people save throughout the year to pay that. There's a few people that can't, and that's where we're going to take the hit. But um, you're not going to see the full effects to it until uh, the following year. And the same, you know, we're not going to know the effects of the state aid until the following year, or at least a few months out now, too, you know. So right now, our cash flow is ready to carry us unless we hear that we're significantly cut from state aid. And then you know, we have a, a little while to carry us. And, you know, we can borrow pretty quickly. You can take a, a anticipation note, like in a matter of a few weeks. All I need is select board approval. You can borrow at a very low interest rate. And that can carry us through the rest of the budget year until you get your feet on the ground the following year. Jan, I have a suggestion if I can make it. Uh, that would be this uh, monthly tracking tool, I'll call it, for, with regard to cash flow. And yeah. that's one of the things which, uh, you know, we deal with budgets. Budgets are projected profit and loss statements, basically prepared as if we're operating on a cash basis, which the town does not. But these... Uh, this worksheet that you uh, have, sh have shown right there, I think would be a really effective tracking tool. And, uh, you know, the un uh, underlying assumptions are, are also really helpful in terms of, you know, our tax rate that you can work with maybe Lee Whitcomb and also our current uh, levy and appropriate base, which I think is around $265.8 million. And we'll uh, see, I mean, at this point, we're projecting no new growth for next year, right? In terms of our uh, full and fair cash value or a very minor amount. And uh, so we'll see how we do. And, you know, the cash flow to repay the tax anticipation notes would be our ability to collect the, the shortfall of property taxes and how we're going to work that out. And, uh, you know, I think we'd have probably, have to, I would imagine the state would require us probably to have to demonstrate that to borrow the money, right, Jan? Isn't that, isn't that so? Uh, we yeah, can't say we want to borrow X amount of dollars, not have a repayment plan with the state, right? Right. They, they ask you for a cash flow. Yes. So, I, mean, so I, don't, I don't know what if you do you work with your fellow uh, have the fellow colleague or your fellow professionals of the uh, association of town treasurers are they developed any kind of a, a tool or something that you can use that the uh, the state house uh, is comfortable with uh, us using yes and i actually so, submitted one t today i thought you were speaking about it okay yeah all right but so it'll be helpful so to hand along to us. The finance committee will be going to be a lot. We get a lot of insights in terms of how we uh, how we figure out the town's cash flow because we're dealing with a cash flow issue. You know, budget issues are profit and loss. Cash flow and profit and loss are two very different things. You know, and um, even with municipal accounting, it varies. Let alone you know business financial accounting. And so uh, your, your tool is very helpful because we without it. We're guesstimating and, you know, to expect us as a, as a finance committee to go to town on any good, any good conscience and uh, say this is what's going to be. I mean, I, it would be disingenuous, to say the least. Well, that's Alan, just a good chance for everybody. Uh, Alan, yeah. let me just ask you this, and Jan as well, um, because I like to think when I, when I refer to borrowing money, previous earlier um so this this type of loan essentially are you pledging uncollected assessed taxes for the loan see i i have no problem with that whatsoever that that collateral is is gold practically because you know those taxes are going to be collected notwithstanding i know that there was reference to a property that was in uh court going back to 2000 right i mean this is that's kind of the exception they don't they don't la it, it doesn't languish uh in in uh in tax court for for that long so to me that's different than just you know an unsecured loan that's going to go towards operations this is the security here and it's not just 
It's not a car. It's not a truck. It's the freaking assessed taxes that's the security. At least that's how I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> right. Well, if, yes. if the economy doesn't get, if it only gets, you know, so strong back uh, for a while, what yes. happens to the what happens to the assessments? Well, it doesn't it, it it doesn't matter. The thing will languish, and the thing you know you might have to pay some interest on it for a number of years, or you elect to clean it up if the town has you know has some better years. But if you know if there's you know if you if you're talking about two hundred thousand, let's say, in stuff that is uncollected. But it's assessed, you know, when that property changes hands, it's the town isn't going to say, well, we'll, we'll cut, you know, the, the new owners, you know, the new owners have to clean it up, basically. Right? Mm -hmm. and, unless the town makes a deal and wants to subsidize it. I, I don't the know. The thing I'd like to see before there's borrowing is a, is a plan to pay it back. Um, you know, the, the sort of easy way is out of, stabilization and free cash but obviously we have other potential uses for those and and uh there's been some pushback against using those to uh to go forward with this budget so um i would ask for uh, any uh, proposed borrowing that we also think about a plan to pay it back are you talking a structured plan where where you're you know you're committing uh, x amount of dollars per year is that what you're saying tom by source. That, that, by source. Okay, well, when you're paying off a school, is every year's payment, you know, uh, um, dedicated to a specific uh, source? Well, typically we pay it through, through raise and appropriate. But, for example, we subsidize the highway borrowing through the free cash policy of lowering the, the rate for, for 10 years. So... Uh, some kind of a plan to pay back what's ever borrowed, um, I think, would be a good. Um, I, it would. I, I don't see how we could do financial planning without that kind, without that kind of. Uh, it would behoove us. Plan. Well, I think the state's going to require it, but but you know something else to keep in mind. You know, long-term debt and working capital money, which is essentially what we're talking about with the tax anticipation financing, is working capital. For now, because the biggest item we have in our salary is, in our, our budget rather, is salaries. And that's going to have to come from the collection of the shortfall. So what Jan is proposing here that I think the state requires that the state house note sale program is that we do have to project how we're going to improve the collection efforts for the money. And for that reason, uh, I think you're, you're, we've already answered the question, but we, we, we're going to have to do it. I mean, if it means extra meetings at a finance committee meeting, I'm game. You know, sit down and figure out a plan. So we can go to town town meeting and say we're going to do this, and we have a plan, and the state's the state's okay with it. I think that would give the, the town meeting a lot more confidence that we're being responsible here and just not, you know, guesstimating from the seat of our pants that we're projecting a, you know, x amount of this and x amount of that without any basis for it, especially uh, any guidance from the state department of revenue. So if, you, if you've looked at my cash flow example, though, you'll see that our, with our current cash flow, even if the state cuts some money, we'd still be okay till mid to late year. So we don't even need to borrow to, for a long time. Yep. So we're, we're fortunate in terms of the highway garage that we're holding on to that money for a few months early in the year here. And we can use that because the highway garage is part of our budget. I'm confirming that with the state, by the way. Yes. And uh, so we don't, we don't hit the point to even borrow. And, and this isn't even talking about our own abilities to borrow from stabilization if we wanted to. I know there's some opposition to that, but, you know, I've done it in the past while we get through the, the tax season carries us usually for two to four hundred thousand dollars right around October and March. Mm -hmm. It gets paid back before June and, and there's no, no problem. Yeah, if we have to ride out some of our uh, vendors for a little bit, you mean so be it, right? Yeah, we, we haven't even had to do that. And this cash projection doesn't even 
include that. I think, you know, we're good until March, unless our numbers get cut, and then it will be some sometimes. Zona. <laughs> So we're we're, say the, we're in good shape to cover uh, what we have to do to move forward, uh, and if we have to, we can take that as stabilization and free cash. Uh, at least until we know what's coming in in November in terms of taxes. So we're not in bad shape here. But I haven't heard the message that Alan's you know going to present at town meeting. I think at this point to present that we're going to vote on a full year budget at town meeting is unrealistic, especially if we're going to ask for a two thirds vote to, to uh, fund any potential shortfalls from the uh, general stabilization. I feel much more comfortable going to town meeting saying at this point, what we're going to do is one twelfth, one twelfth. I mean, I'm, I'm for postponing the meeting, but if you want to have a June meeting at your call and what we'll instead do is to use the state house note sale program. But to say we're going to glom all of our free cash and bring down to zero our general stabilization fund. We're, you know, we're, not, we're not bringing anything. Alan, Alan, we're not bringing anything down to zero. Well, darn close, right? No, 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 we're not. Not at all. You can't spend plenty, that unauthorized. It has to be returned by June 30th. June 30th next year? Yes. Can't spend it without town meeting vote, so it, it has to be returned to the general stabilization funds by June thirtieth. And what about free cash? You, you, are you comfortable bringing our free cash down to nothing? Am I? Yes. I mean, you're kind of the CFO of the town. I mean, you because you have your hand in this stuff every day of the week. No, I I don't I, think we usually do that. We usually reserve some for other spending. So no, I'm not a, a fan of that. So, uh, and I am proposing adding 150000 to free cash. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, where are you coming up with that? That was stabilization from free cash, sorry. That's correct. Capital stabilization. That's something we can cut back on. <laughs> You know, we can reduce that number. That's a big, yes. that's a big chunk. In hard years, you don't save as much. Yeah, you know, we that's also what we're proposing uh, here. But I mean, just moving from one hundred and fifty to a hundred is a big is a is it, it you know is a big step in the right direction. And and other towns are skipping it altogether and you're taking it to zero. And, and um, well, Philip, Philip, the other towns are in, in significantly worse shape than we are. We're in good shape compared to Deerfield, Sunderland, and Wakeley. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't look to them as a way to go because they're doing it out of almost desperation. Um, I, you know, they're also, they're also really reducing their expenses and that's, that, that's the side that I still don't really hear us, you know, going after. Like, you know, my- we, What we, expenses, Philip, do we want to reduce? Well, we still have um, specific raises in our budget that are, you know, close to double digit. Which raises, Philip? What? Which? Well, I- What are you talking- Yeah, the, I, I, have not, I have not sent out um, a spreadsheet with the wage freeze on it yet. I, I, I can do that. Thank you. There, there are contractual salaries as well, though. Mm -hmm. sure. That's understood. And that will, you know, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one part of the problem. But there, there are, you know, c cutting back on that will, is, is a big chunk, too. Just, ju just taking those, the, those few um d d back down to the same rate of raise that everybody else gets um is uh is, is also a significant number 20 30,000 i don't know what it was so you t 20 30,000 from that 50,000 from the reduction in the capital stabilization input from free cash and um we're already We've just we've just cut 
from 400,000 down to 300,000 or three or 317, whatever, whatever we're at right now, whatever Tom's, um, you know, numbers. From well, the, the, the free cash to capital stabilization doesn't do anything about the operating budget. Mm. I see your point. Mm -hmm. my, my, my sense is uh, we, are, we all have more homework to do. Well, we were told that by this time, at that time, we were on last week's meeting, that Tom Hutchinson was going to come to us with a, uh, the reports from and recommendations from the department to heads about how they can cut. We've heard 16,000 from, from which department, Tom Hudson? What was that? Which, which department's cutting 16,000? Uh, that's the total. The total. Oh. So everyone's gotten back to you, and that's what they're recommending, a total cut of 16,000? That, that's what aggregates the 16,000 as a cut for the overall operating budget? Uh, that's, that, that was uh, what people voluntarily put up. All right. When you when you do the wage cut calculation, the wage freeze calculations, what's the savings there? Uh, hang on. In the past, Phil, it's been. Um, I, I I don't have it split out right now. I get, I remember Phil some of the other stuff in our regular meetings. You know, if we did two percent raise or two and a half percent raise. You know, it was costing the town. One of them was around eleven to twelve thousand. The other was like thirteen, fourteen thousand. Yeah. So, so I, I think, well, one of them was I. Uh, the two point five was sixteen thousand. So I think that we can take sixteen thousand as as the figure. Well, like Phil says, once you start doing it, it does start to add up. And, and all of the proposed. I'm, I'm back. And, and that applies to that, you know that that's 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 just the you know does that include the the town clerk the town administrative assistant etc cetera, etc cetera? The, 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 so or are those held out for for um for for their intended you know uh, raises as as was set forth in February and March and Jan can you can you uh, unshare your screen uh, yes maybe. Did anybody else cut out of the meeting? No, nope. mm, I don't think so. All right, because I, I lost you. What were you saying about cuts, Phil? Um, that I, I asked whether that, that projected savings to, to go to two and a half percent, did that include taking the town clerk to two and a half percent? Did that include, include the town administrative assistant to go to two and a half percent from whatever the projected increase to that was, as, as well as the full the, um, of that position. What two and a half percent? No, the, about, Phil? The, um, the, 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 the town clerk, um, her requested um, more or less promotion was, was, was more than the two and a half percent raise. So there would be another, um, call it uh, $3,000 there. So, we're up close to 19. And, and is it still your intention to make the town administrative assistant a full-time position in this budget? Um, um, I, with no, this you guys voted against that. Okay. No, there's no raise. That, that would be no raise for the, for the assistant. It's 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 just a bunch of bad choices, no matter how you it is. how you look at it. It is. Um, in, in terms of uh, look, um, I'll I'll give the example of my son, who he's still working. He works for a local. Well, it's a, a conglomerate, but they're in Springfield. They gave um, they gave uh, their sort of upper management folks had to take a twenty percent pay cut for at least three months. Okay, now. That I mean, that's significant. That's a significant amount of money that 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 they save doing that. And we who knows if it's going to after the three months, it's going to be there. Um, 
saving this 14 or 16 or $18,000. I'm sorry, Phil. I got to say on this one here, I'd rather have less gravel put on the roads than to, than to be squeezing employees that are uh, modestly paid to begin with. Um, it, it just, it, to me, it makes no sense. You, you, I'm not saying they necessarily, yeah, you, yeah it, that, that's to me. I mean, if you want to do, you know, and we've, we've had this discussion about, you know, for no cost of living increases. And in the end, we always do them. Um, and I think that it's probably served us well to do them. Not yeah, I see the bad. wisdom in what you're saying, Roy, but, you know, and, and I struggle with this issue because, you know, I'm also sensitive to the argument that, you know, it's either a fiscal emergency or it's not, and that it can't be a fiscal emergency for thee, but not for me. And, um, you know, so, so, so that, you know, the, the burdens, those burdens are best shared. Um, to, to yeah, I, yeah, I, and, and I don't. Because I, down I, the road, like, like for this, like, like what, what we're trying to do in, in a lot of respects is plan for an even worse case scenario. I mean, that's what a lot of this is about. Like, how do we position ourselves if, you know, if, if the revenues really do fall off the cliff, if, if the second wave hit, all these other things. And for the, like, for the school, the, the, the school is sort of like tapped out, except for the very big possible savings from clawbacks from unions. But, and, exactly. But <laughs> that, that's a negotiated but, situation. But when, when, do you, when do you go there for that? Yeah, so, 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 so and, and one of the things that I try to really look at is w w what's necessary in order to, to, to get to that point, right? And, and, and like, w be, because there's actually all kinds of legal requirements. Like you have to have, to, to be able to present this to the union and still be able to win a, uh, a, a mediation or an arbitration that might, res or, or a grievance that might result from something like this, which it will, um, then, you know, you have to have finite information that you present to them and you have to have sort of this is what we do if you don't agree this is your chance to to like do something different etc but you know they have lists of all of our raises but in all of our towns and um if it you know you can't say to them take food off of your table if we're not doing that to everybody yeah i i i don't disagree and and I really don't. You know, and, and they know but like, they, they watch everything. But you're, but, but you're always starting with the most vulnerable, <laughs> if you, if you will. And I guess if I'm standing up for anything, and I, I don't I'm know about that, that Roy. Roy. So people that work for the town, not not talking about the teachers, that's union and stuff. But so the last five years, each year has been a two and a half increase. So yeah. five years, that's a twelve and a half. Last year was one percent. Last year huh? was one percent. Huh? Last year was one percent. This this year, yeah, we, we the, the three the three year for Frontier was a one two two. No, I'm not talking the union. I'm talking the town employees. Right. I'm thinking the last five years has been a two and a half percent increase each year. Right. So over five years, that's a twelve and a half percent. Okay. Now what I'd say to Roy is that's all well and good, but there are taxpayers in town. I doubt have gotten a 12 and a half percent increase in the last five years. And not all of them are big high dollar earners. That's just what I would respond to Roy. All right. Well, this year, this year we're holding it even. There's no raises this year. I would think that's appropriate. It is. I agree with you. Okay. I don't I'm agree not, with I'm Roy. Gonna I'm not going to argue. Uh, no, but you say, wait, you're saying, you're saying in the, in this, this budget coming up, right? You're saying. That's right. Which budget? In this budget coming about? up. Right. Okay. And this is the one that Tom had prepared several months ago, or this is new? This is new. Okay. When do we. Yeah. Start? So if we freeze wages and cut 20% of the rest of the operating budget and fill in the $318,000 gap with free cash and general stabilization, we could address a roughly $490,000 revenue deficit. All right, we can't, we can't cut 
the operating budget by 20%. No way. Right. So, so, so that, that's what it takes to get to almost half a million. Yeah. All right. We could get to 318 without, without any cuts to the operating budget. And if we need more than that, we can borrow it. So that's the contingency. The contingency is, you know, is to borrow if it gets more than 318, which is fine. And, uh, you know, that, that can be discussed at the town meeting. Yeah, it would have to be. <laughs> yeah. Town meeting is going to say cut 20, cut 30, cut 40, cut 50%. You know, I, I don't know if that's correct, Phil. I really don't. Not when you bring it down to, you know, do you want potholes the size of your axle in front of your house? How are you going to get to work? <laughs> How are you going to get to the hospital? Whatever. You're asking, you're asking the guy that the state takes care of the roads in front of his house. So, you know. Okay. <laughs> you're going to have a whole different set of problems. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with, with this. You know, I'm fine with the 12, 12, 12. I'm fine with saying that we're, 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 our, we're planning for a contingency of 317,000. And if it's, if it's greater, we, we'll, we'll need to borrow. I have no problem with that. The the thing that the thing that I did not like though, what what was sort of the 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 plan as sketched out, where we just um, uh, agree to make up shortfall out of stabilization and let the town administrator take care of that to the extent that well, he feels best. Like I, that's not okay. The the, the, the route that I want to go. That's not planned. Uh, I don't think that was ever proposed, Phil. Yeah. What, what are you talking about, Phil? That was sort of my understanding of what was proposed. What? No, no. So, I have no idea where you got that understanding. So, so, so John, tell us again where the 318000 is going to come from. All right, it's going to come from stabilization and free cash. How much? About uh, 160000 each as needed if it's needed what's our current free cash right now tom uh hang on it's uh thank you 497 that's that's free that's that's free cash at the start of this year right that's what we have available to spend in FY20. Right. Okay. Uh, and how much of it have we spent? FY20, that's what we're in right now. Yeah. Right. Right. We have that much going into the next town meeting. And actually, the new laws say we can, we can drag that number into FY21 if we need to. Mm -hmm. Right. So are you, saying, are you saying that at the end of June 30th, we're going to have 490,000 free cash? No, I'm saying we have it right now. So what's the ear? What's what's what are the commitments that have to come out of there? There are a number of items in the warrant that are slated to come from free cash, including the 150 for capital stabilization, which is the largest draw on it right now. Free capitalization. My, uh, my current uh, numbers for after town meeting uh, w without the um, with, with, uh, are uh, 170,000. So, so that includes using 160 for, for uh, stab stabilizing the FY21 budget. Okay. So 170. If we did, yeah. So that's yeah, not that's zero. including yeah. using that 160 for yeah. for stabilizing yeah. the budget and 160 yeah. from general stabilization. So that's so, so we we would be going, we would be rolling over 170. I, I, so that's I, not zero, Alan. I'm well, the uh, last proposal you got us uh, emailed to me, Tom Tom Hutchinson, was that uh, 
you are projecting free cash for about $246,700. I guess there's been some further changes. This is from May 11th, proposed warrant changes. The uh, Article 2. Article two. Say, let's go into town meeting with some with some finalized figures because if we start changing figures in town meeting, I don't think that's going to go over where well anyone have any confidence level of passing any kind of budget plan, be it full year or twelve by twelfth and reconvene or whatever. Does, does anyone know the rules? Will we is there any way that the town could use the Community Preservation Act to preserve the town? You're talking about Good point, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, 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 I don't believe that any of the things. I, I, I don't believe that any of the uh, money articles are are suitable for a CPA. They are helping the budget out already, though, by taking the the playground, the, the elementary school playground, off of the budget and putting it onto that. So that's a big help already. Mm -hmm. I don't need no playground. Uh, what? What? <laughs> I'd like to. No, man, never mind. <laughs> oh. I, so, think I, mean, you know, more, I think we have more homework to do. And, you know, I, one of the things in doing all this, too, I, you know, I, I still say, you know, just like the school is doing, we should be preparing for a worser case scenario. And that, you know, the 20% operating budget, uh, cut sounds horrible, but there's a possible, you know, a, a possibility well above zero that, you know, that we're going to have to go in that direction. And, you know, when you're asking the, the, the cha department chair chairs to make further cuts, one of the things you should be asking them to do is, hey, worst case scenario, what does a 20% cut for you look like? And that... We should be planning to, in that direction, and that's what we—that's what government should be doing—is planning for the worst. So I have a question for you. The uh, biggest increase for the Conway Grammar School fiscal year 21 budget was the uh, new SPED teacher. You know, and that was so. Is that still on plan? That was supposed to be going to be funded through the uh, SPED revolving fund. And so my question to you, Phil, is that still on slate? And uh, are, there, are there any talk about? changes to the Sped revolving fund that's for the uh, wings program right right so, so that's off of our uh, off of our operating budget i mean that doesn't come out of our tax base uh-huh except that that person opts for health insurance right then it, that has an impact over and above the conway grammar school correct we do um, reimburse from that what's that we do we get, reimburse we get reimbursed for health insurance we get, we get, we get reimbursed for health insurance Yep. That's news. Thank you, Jan. I, I was told you we didn't, so this is good news. All right, good. I mean, the, the, the grammar school budget is being discussed next Wednesday at, the, at, at 4 o'clock. This Wednesday at yeah. 4 o'clock, um, mm -hmm. if, if you want to. I mean, there's an I, 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 uh, instructional assistant position and then health insurance, and those are the two major it, 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 items, rather, for increasing the fiscal year 21 Conway grammar school budget. And they're under negotiation with the union, so there's not much wiggle room except if we go to, uh, you know, re-arbitration for, you know, financially uh, desperate reasons. Well, the thing that you should all know is that, that our, our agreement with our teachers, you know, we were in arbitration that I've, I've been negotiating with our Union 38 teachers for two straight years now mm -hmm. on behalf of the town. Uh, and um, that we, we, we were in arbitration we post we we um we we folded up the arbitration and we reached a one-year agreement based on last year's budget numbers our agreement with our teachers ends in august um so we're, we're headed into another school year without an agreement and one of the big decisions that we are having to make and i really i wish i could talk more about this in open camera setting um but you know is is what amount we budget um for our teachers um, because they are heading into a no contract situation for the coming school year. And so that's that, and that has big ramifications. The frontier teachers um, locked in a 2% for this year. Um, so, you know, that, that's, 
there's a whole, I, you know, I, I can't really talk too much more about it. But so, 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 so li listen, so what are we trying to do? Are we, are we just, was this the purpose of this just to have this discussion, which I think has been great. Are we looking for a, for a, a you want to straight up vote now? Is that what you're asking for? What's that? Don't worry, this is for the select board for Tom Hedison. Are you asking for the finance committee to give a straight up and down vote on the budget with some provisos like the uh, borrowing capability to authorize? Uh, I had four objectives going into this. One was to set an estimated revenue shortfall figure. One was to set any operating budget cuts. One was to set an annual raise or no raise, and I, I hear now no raise. Okay, that's good. Everybody agrees on that. And then uh, also set the amounts and sources for funding the estimated revenue shortfall. So I've got um, no raise. I have no consensus on operating budget cuts. I have no, no the, consensus on an estimated revenue shortfall figure. Um, and, and then we can start talking about setting amounts and sources for uh, funding the revenue shortfall. That's we right. were looking at 400 for the revenue shortfall. Uh, that seemed to me sort of an emerging consensus number right. kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay, and the budget we're talking about is the, it's the 12th, it's a 12th or, or, or no, it's, it's a 12th less my, you know, per month, a 12, I mean, in other words, Refresh my memory. Well, I don't have the notes here in front of us. In, in front the, of the, the budget gets set as a one twelfth of this year's operating budget going forward. There is an understanding that some of the expenses are front loaded. Yes. Okay. So, that, that, so just like our regular budget, it doesn't mend if, it doesn't matter if, if some account overspends, so right, long as right, by the right, end of the fiscal right. year it's made up. We we reconcile. Correct. Um, Okay. Um, 12, back, 12, back 12. to Roy's question. So, from what the okay. four points? So, no, I'm just trying. Wait, wait, Tom, I'm just trying. So it's a 12, 12, 12 with with the assumption that we're going to be short revenue, 318 to 400 thousand or whatever number we we agree on. Okay, that makes sense. I just needed to. Um, no, the, 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 two, the two have nothing to do with each other. We, we just submit a 112 FY20 operating budget if we don't have a town meeting this year. Um, no, you and, can do it with a town meeting. You can do it with a town meeting. Well, too. right. Okay. Uh, another thing I would like to mention is that if 400,000 is the figure, um, then with... Um, uh, with the 318 figure used as, as something to spend free cash and general stabilization on, uh, a 10% operating budget cut would generate $85,000. Okay. Okay, so that, that brings us up to the $400,000 level. If if we subsidize that 318, and again these figures are obviously um, relatively arbitrary. I mean we could we could, uh, but I, I am still looking for some policy direction in terms of um, any operating budget cuts. If you want to go there, and just just reminding you that um, uh, about you, you know. Uh, a 5% cut would, would um, come close to uh, the free cash that we, that we normally generate. Um, so if we, if we cut 5%, that's kind of the same as saying, well, we'll we, we won't have any free cash next year from unfunded, um, you know, uh, but from budget overages. Um, that, that, that's, that's, you know, there's other things in free cash, but it is the major factor. So we can uh, we, we we can consider that a, a ballpark kind of estimate. So so cutting 10% of the operating budget would definitely affect services, and um, and uh, probably not not leave us with any free cash in FY22. I'm putting my two cents on that. 10% is too much. 10% is too much. 
Yeah. Um, the thing is, you can't do that across the board to all departments. I agree. For example, if you look at my budget, there's nothing in it but <laughs> paper, right. uh, stamps, and um, you know, printer cartridges to print bills that, that I have to do. So there's, n there's nowhere to cut from my budget unless you lay somebody off. Right, and there's a bunch of and departments that are like that, that are similarly situated. Yeah, mo most of the budgets are, most of the department budgets are like that. But, but, but still, I think, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not okay with just out of hand rejecting anything. And I think we're obligated to take a look at what does, uh, uh, you know, what does 10% look like, you know, and, and do your best to, 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 to try not to affect services to the extent you can. And, and yeah, you can't you can't cut the budget ten percent and not affect services. And and you see which you see how it's affected, and you develop options, and you make your choices based on what the least worst choices are. But um, there there's certainly room for discretion about which what within the budget gets cut to get to ten percent. And those are the things that you know. Well, well, Philip, if if you have ideas about this, then come up with them. Make suggestions concrete suggestions on where to cut the budget 10%. Right. Well, I've said, you know, that you, you, you start, start, start with a highway person. Um, start with a transit. Well, I, I'm, yeah, no. I, I can go out that. and. A highway department I, I can is ask. the most important department in town. It's the most visible department in town. We need to keep our roads uh, well uh, maintained for our emergency services. And no, I don't and think. Cutting going a highway six, person is the way to go. Going from five to four is not going to endanger public safety in this town. Yeah, but, I, I don't agree. We, we, we had four up until just a few years ago for forever. Well, I don't care uh, what we I, had up until I'm a few saying, years ago. I'm not ago. saying that you cut. I'm just saying that you, you furlough temporarily to get through the budget crisis and then you add it back. You know, that this is just one. You said, you said come up with furlough a Furlough temporarily. What yeah. do you say to that? What do you say to the person that you're furlough? I'm sorry, we're not going to pay you for the next year, but we want you to come back. You know, these are all practical. Discussion? These are all practical issues, and cutting is very difficult. But you, you, you can't just reject these possibilities yeah. out of hand without studying them and looking to see what is doable and what's not. I, you know, I'm not comfortable with just surface analysis of various department budgets without like a real look to see what can be done. And we're not doing that yet. And just to reflect, well, say we're not gonna do it, just doesn't help. One of the things I could do is ask departments to, um, you know, if, if, if they were level funded, what, what would they not be able to do that they were planning? If they cut 5%, what would they not be able to do? And if they cut 10%, what would they not be able to do? And you know, I, I think you'll get um, similar answers to what Jan just offered. I know that Ron comes in within half a percent of his budget pretty much every year because he's building up the roads and he puts material on the roads. So, he, you know, and he has a 10 year plan to do that, that he's in the middle of. So yeah, we can, we can cut it out, but again, it's, it's, um, I, I, um, I just, just pointing out that we are talking about service reductions here. And that's, that's understood. You, you cannot cut an operating budget without cutting services. That's all we provide is services. That's what we do. We're government. We provide services. And of course. Oh, and and I, I, I just want to mention uh, also, I, I, I believe it's the case that um, uh, when we added the, the highway department staff person, we were actually um, returning to a previous level of employment um, that uh, at, at one point the, uh, the highway supervisor um, uh, thought that he could try getting along with, uh, with the, uh, the one less person and, and found that uh, it, was, it was not doable after a period of time. That was during from uh, initial, the, the, the initial couple of years when, uh, when he was um, uh, learning the position. So, um, you know, th th there's no magic bullets to this kind of thing, and there's no escaping tough decisions. You just got to see what it looks like and go from there. 
I wouldn't imagine any different conversation to be had at town meeting either than from what we're having right now. But, but I don't, but that's why it's so important to have this right now so that you don't look stunned and surprised in a deer caught in headlights at town meeting. Here's what I said. I think we have, uh, we have more homework to do. The finance committee will reduce its budget from 300 to 135 just to renew our membership in MMA. <laughs> Sounds good, Alan. Sounds good. That's another. So we're up to $19,135. I mean, we're making progress. It's like, let Monty Hall, let's make a deal, you know? The, the other thing, too, that, that we haven't, that nobody's really brought up is that, you know, we've looked at Frontier and we're looking at our own budget, but there's several also big additions to our budget that, you know, I, and I don't know if anybody read the, the, the article about the Franklin Tech budget yesterday with the superintendent saying, yeah, they're up to 10% in reserves and they know they can only hold on to five and they're looking to just see what they can spend it on and things like that. That article was horrible. And, and, and from just from looking at it from the point of view, like um, th that is a school right now that is saving close to like $1,000 a day in transportation expenses. And there's no, uh, the, the fact that they're not at all contemplating um, returning some of that E and D, um, the, which is their free cash to the towns in, in a pandemic year is nuts. And, and, and I, you know, I think that they could really use a little bit of uh, um, uh, help in, in that regard. And just the communication, you know, we, we John, you, you formed a, a group to talk to the frontier people, but I, I would suggest taking that group on the road and, and talk to Franklin Tech. They can help us out. And they should be helping us out. Just look at that article on yesterday's paper. They're flush right now. And, um, and, and then the other thing that people have brought up in the other towns is FERCOG. And that FERCOG just all was given a, a, a big um, a benefit this fall in um, uh, giving uh, permanent annual bonuses for, uh, for uh, longevity and for uh, uh, having a good uh, evaluation, multiple bonuses to, to all the FERCOG. Yeah, the, the FERCOG bonuses were cut. They were? They were cut. I wish you would have told me that. It, I, you would have not had to listen to the previous 60 seconds. On behalf of the town employees, I'd also like to tell you that the same employees that you're talking about cutting pay raises and, and cutting personnel, their home, taking up part of their homes as offices, they're providing their own laptops, their own cell phones, their own facilities to work for the town right now. So those people you're talking about cutting are giving it all to you right now. As many other homeowners are doing with, uh, from their own resources to help make the budget. Agreed. I just, I just, you know, they're, they're, and I'm not really speaking for myself. Uh, I'm speaking for others more so, but they're putting in more than what they're getting, what they're, what they have in the past. And I'm just telling you, they're putting it out there. Yep, yep. And, you know, I, I, I think our town employees do a fantastic job. This is nothing about workplace performance or employee worth or the way I view anything. This is just sort of trying to figure out what's responsible and what's appropriate and how to go forward. And um, it's not pretty and it's gonna hurt everybody. It already is hurting everybody. Yeah. That's why the finance committee exists. You can blame us. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. I think we've we've beaten this enough for tonight. Please. Uh, why doesn't everybody come back with some concrete suggestions next week? Um, were you gonna send Tom. out a note about cuts and the and the impact? Um, yeah, we have. That was a good suggestion. We have to decide on a budget by next week, don't we? It would be best. <laughs> okay. So we've we've got to hammer out a budget next week. So let's everybody do whatever research they have to do because next week we've got to finalize a budget. Tom uh, Hutchinson, is it possible to please that uh, you were given four different uh, items uh, just before? Uh, if you can re, re the meeting uh, to the, all the uh, participants in this meeting, please. 
because I want to come up with some ideas and proposals. I mean, uh, I'm sure as we all go to bed on this tonight, in the next few nights, we'll probably come up with some other brilliant ideas and we'll figure it out. Yes, I was uh, just reading off the agenda. Um, one was to set the estimated revenue shortfall figure. I'm now using $400,000. Thank you. Uh, one was the question of the annual raise. I'm now not considering any annual raise. One was to set operating budget cuts, which we're going to do next week. And I am going to ask uh, department heads for that information. And one is to set amounts and sources for funding the estimated revenue shortfall. So amounts and sources. So some of that you know, could come from a cut. Some of it could come from free cash. Some of it could come from general stabilization. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'm overlooking something. Uh, any uh, ideas are more than welcome. Thank you. And I have a question for you, Jan. The uh, penalties and interest and all that we that the uh, what we assess and the people who pay their property taxes late. What's what percentage do we get of that? The state takes a certain percentage of that, don't, don't they? No, we get all yeah. of it. We got all of it. All right. In the beginning, I gave you that figure and what, what the estimated loss would be. It was pretty insignificant. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the penalties are how much? What is it? How does it work? Uh, late fee is like the first notice is $20 uh -huh. for real estate, personal property, and excise. Mm -hmm. And from there, they're all different. So. There's, okay. There's different levels. The state mandates 14% as penalty interest and unpaid, right? Until it goes into tax title and then it's 16%. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For real estate, excise is 12%. Thank you. I'll come up with some ideas about percentage budget cuts. Selling that property is going to look significant. What did you say? Selling that property that was, yeah. Yeah. that could help. It, it, you know, I mean, you're talking about a p repaying many years worth of taxes. No. And I do, I do anticipate that the grammar school will be cutting the budget to some extent. We're, it, it's structurally impossible, we think, to get to level funding, but we think that you know, we're, we're, we're trying. We're trying to get as close as we can um, because there are, the, so, you know, we have identified, for instance, an $8,000 savings in uh, light, uh, through, through a lighting grant, an Eversource lighting grant. Um, so, so wait a second, Phil. You're telling me that the school will probably not get to level funding. The grammar school. The grammar school. The grammar school. But you're so, saying for the town we should cut 10%? We don't know what the grammar school is going to come up with yet. It's – but – We'll find out on Wednesday. Well, didn't you just we're, say we're, they no. probably won't get to level funding? Um, we're we're going to see. We're going to see. There's no. It's not. The 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 what what allowed Frontier to do it is that um, there was new hires that weren't hired. Right. So so that's a lot different than um, you know if you only have one teacher per grade you can't you can't fire one teacher that that one teacher so. Um, and but they're taking a look at everything and um with a mandate to get to level but we don't know if we can but we'll find out so uh, what i what i hear people talking about are things like there's full-time positions in the grammar school that could be half-time and shared with other another grammar school yeah and there <clears throat> we've been talking about stuff like that for years um and you know, I, I tried to set it up so that we shared a principal with the other school. Um, and I tried to set it up so that we shared a school nurse with the other school. And that um, I've been unsuccessful in doing that. But those would have been, you know, the, the super the, the principal is the highest paid person in the building. It, um, but um, when we took a look at it, and you, we ended up not being all that saving because you had to pay people extra to be the person in charge during that time period when the principal's not there. And um, the, the savings, the more we fleshed it out, the more the savings evaporated. And there was things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and, and there's also significant finance, you know, 
when, when, when we share services with another town and our health insurance copay is different, that employee wants to, and, and we're higher, or you know, we, we pay a higher percentage of the copay, that employee really wants to be our employee and not the other town's employee. Um, so the, that, that's the equivalent of a pay cut, even if you don't think of it like that. And that re represents issues within the employer rep relationship. So there, the, the stuff there is really complicated and everything has, is everything there is a cat with a really long tail. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, but, but we're trying, I'm trying, we're pushing. That's what I mentioned, Phil, to you something. This is from the May 11th proposed warrant changes that Tom Hutchison generated. Item number four was, I anticipate that the final school budgets will be somewhat reduced. This will take some of the load off the town side. So I'm just going to reiterate that, all right? Right. We've already so, talked of increasing revenue. We've already expected no state or federal uh, relief. And we've talked about um, increasing our proposed budget shortfall by $82,000. So... I'm just offering that perspective as we, as we are over the next week and for you to bring to your uh, school committee you know, compatriots, please. Yes, believe and me, I'm, when I, I'm, I'm, I'm all over that. I'm, I'm, thank you. Yeah. All right, I think we've beaten this to death. All right. Next item on the agenda, Tom, do we have anything uh, not anticipated? Mm -hmm. I do not have anything. All right, how about your update? Uh, one committee item. The Community <laughs> Preservation Committee is considering an additional item. Uh, since it would not affect the budget's bottom lines, I thought you might want to consider amending the CPC article. Uh, they're meeting at this very time, so I can't report on their deliberations, but I thought I'd give you a heads up that they might have something to add to their warrant article. Uh, in departmental news, for an update on the highway maintenance building, the footings have been poured, the foundations are partially formed, and they may be able to pour the foundations this week. Um, um, uh, my uh, item, due to the deteriorating financial situation of many cities and towns, Maya is forgiving costs under $5,000 that they normally would have billed in March, this is saving the town $268 based on changes to highway equipment bought in February. Um, Conway is eligible for $166,813 through the CARES Act. This can be used for COVID-19 related expenses for both FY 2020 and FY 2021 to December 30th, including making town buildings safer among other purposes. I, uh, I anticipate most of the, um, oh, I'm getting ahead. Um, the, uh, the requirements are that they are necessary expenditures incurred due to the public health emergency. Uh, these funds may not be used to substitute for lost revenue. Uh, also, the funds must not have been budgeted as of March 27th. They may not supplant state or municipal spending, and they have to have been incurred on or after March 1st, 2020, up to December 30th, 2020. So I'm sorting through guidance on uh, how the town might use these funds. I expect that the schools uh, may have a number of items that we can uh, use our funds to contribute to. Um, Let's look I have into that. I, I think yeah, I, I have I have reached out to the Conway Grammar School and the district office about CARES Act eligible expenses, um, and so I am working on that. Okay. So I, you must have and that's all I have. So just just a question about you know that that number is what we're potentially eligible for, but we have to have expenses to, to reimburse. Well, well of course. That are, that are reimbursable within the meaning of that. So I got, um, when, when, when I looked at it, it seemed like it's gonna be a struggle to be able to put eligible numbers up on the board um, in that amount, in the full amount that, um, 
So, you know, and it, it really depends on what the definitions are and exactly what they mean by reimbursement for things like distance learning expenses for a school and what all can go into that. Um, but that's... Well, so, so, let's look into it. Yeah, they are. Okay. Thank you, Tom. My next item is concerns of the selectmen. Philip, Bob, you have any concerns? Nope. That haven't already been expressed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just just that um, from from this morning's meeting, what the just so that you all know, the Deerfield Chief um, Police Chief is trying to uh, get all four towns to have their town meeting at the same place, the football field, and he wants everybody to to, to rent a big to pitch in on renting the giant tent, um, um, and. You know, and I asked about this because I, you know, I, I said, you know, we're planning on just doing it open air and the, and I don't really, like, there was a whole bunch of people that said, no, 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 you need to, it's safer to be in a tent. And I didn't understand that logic. And I asked, I asked what the rationale is. Why are they saying that? What's the, what's the basis for that opinion? And a bunch, and I don't know who responded. Maybe Tom could, knows who exactly what was responding, but they said that, oh, if you have a tent, town meeting will go faster and the whole risk is you don't want people to be together for too long. And, and I didn't really understand the whole thing that, you know, to me, I don't understand that if you have a tent, how does that make it go faster? But um, they, they all sort of accepted that as, the, as you know, truth. So Sounds I, like a reimbursable I, expense. I, I, I got it as a, as a, yeah, it would be, I think. Um, I got it as, as a more weather-related um, that, that, that you wouldn't have any um, delays because of weather. That, that's, all, that's all I could get out of that. So yeah, I, um, but that would certainly be additional expenditure, although you're right, that would be reimbursed. You probably have better yeah, sound but, quality as well. And that's a whole nother issue is the PA system that we don't own, you know. <laughs> yeah, but are we gonna get got people one. to travel to Frontier? <laughs> well, that's what they're saying. You know, yeah. How many people are going to go to Frontier? Um, you know, I I know the way, um, but I know the way. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I I didn't think that it was a particularly attractive uh, uh, offer, but um, uh, nonetheless, this is out there, and that they the our other three towns seem really keen. That how could we rope Conway into this? They say. All right. Anything else? Any announcements? All right. Um, next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday. That's next Tuesday because Monday is Memorial Day. So, uh, and it's via Zoom. Um, if there's no other business come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Philip? Aye. Robert? Bye. Oh, all right. We're adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Jim. Good night. Uh, take night. care. Yeah. Good night. Thanks, Jim. Yeah.